What is this cold everybody's talking about? I don't know. All I, all I see around are warm smiles and hearts and greetings and hugs. Let's just keep that warmth going. Good to be together. And we're glad for each person that's here today. We hope you feel welcome and warm. You know, if you raised uh, your kids in the 90s and early 2000s like we did, you probably have a lot of tapes like these, something like this, um, full of recordings of their antics and exploits that are now largely useless because we don't have things to play them with. Um, we have a lot of these. We have a couple of boxes full of tapes like this and really haven't watched them in probably 20 years. Um, until this holiday season, we shipped them off to a company and they were all digitized and, and now we can watch them on our TV, on our phone, and uh, let's see, on our, uh, our laptops, about any kind of medium we have. And it, it's been great. And we've been watching, girls have been watching, for instance, their birth videos. They've never seen themselves born before. Uh, they've never seen those, those early tapes. And so it's been a lot of fun. And uh, among the many fun things about it is... Um, seeing them learn to walk. Of course, we recorded all of that, you know. And uh, it's sort of amazing to, to, to see them start the process in the video recordings. You know, they start out, they're sort of flat on their stomachs in, in one video, and, and then in the next, maybe they're up on all fours trying to uh, you know, almost like a puppy trying to figure out what to do next. And, and, and then the next tape, they are taking that first tentative step and maybe falling over. And, and the next time the, the video clicks on, they're running all over the room. It's sort of the natural progression of, of the process. And uh, if that didn't happen, we would know that there's something wrong, right? If that sort of natural progression didn't happen, if they didn't start crawling on time, if they didn't progress from that to, to taking that first shaky step and, and then eventually the next step and then putting a bunch of them together and, and eventually, of course, running all over the place, creating toddler mayhem, uh, we would be concerned. If, if those things didn't happen at any point, we would have them at the doctor, correct? We would be rightly concerned. We would know something was not right. You see, what is true physically is in fact even more true when it comes to our spiritual steps. I want us to think today about the importance of taking the next step when it comes to our spiritual life. And that applies to us individually in our walk with the Lord, but it also applies to the body of Christ the church, and this particular congregation of the church. How important the next step is. Are you ready? Are you willing to take the next step? Are we, as a church, ready and willing to take the next step? This is absolutely a biblical concept. And the Bible talks about it in almost this exact way. 
steps, our walk. Before we get to our main text this morning, I want, to, I want you to hear a few of the other places where Scripture speaks like this. So I want to begin with uh, some Proverbs from Scripture. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 15 says there that the simple person believes everything, but the prudent gives thought to his steps. Chapter 16, verse 9. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. And then chapter 20, verse 24, Proverbs says, a man's steps are from the Lord. And then outside of the Proverbs, from, from one of the great prophets, Jeremiah, he famously wrote this. He said, I know, O Lord, that the way of a man is not in himself that it is not in man who walks to direct his steps. God is concerned about our steps, isn't he? In fact, he wants to direct our steps. He wants to guide us. He wants to show us the way. One of the great miracles that Jesus did during his public ministry involved a man who hadn't taken a step on his own in 38 years. This is recorded in um, the Gospel of John chapter 5. Jesus saw this man. He was uh, a lame man lying beside a, a pool in Jerusalem. We know it as the Pool of Bethesda. It was famous for its healing waters, whether that was uh, according to truth or according to superstition, it was known for its healing waters. Jesus saw this man lying there, and I've always found it fascinating, the question that Jesus asked this man. Do you remember what he asked him? He asked him, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? Well, now, we might assume, of course he wants to be healed. But don't be so sure. I'm not sure he wanted to. When Jesus asked him if he wanted to be healed, if he wanted to take the next step, the man did not say, yes. That was not his response, but instead he complained that there was no one there to help him get into the healing waters when the time came. So Jesus immediately and very sharply, it seems, commands the man, get up, take up your bed and walk. Jesus doesn't seem to give the man a choice. He commands him. He, he heals him by command, forced him to take the next step. You know, when, when Jesus called his earliest and closest followers, he commanded them. He, he said to them, come, follow me. And they were expected to, to get in line and follow his steps, right? Which they did. This was such a prominent theme uh, among the followers of Jesus that probably the first title that they were given as a group was the way. They were referred to as the way, those that followed Jesus, those who followed in his footsteps, who, who let the Lord direct their steps, the way. So I want us to consult one other passage today, written by one of those first followers of Jesus. 
Uh, the Lord found he and his brother Andrew working at their trade. They were commercial fishermen. Uh, he found them one day and, and called them to leave that and to come follow him. Now, it's a pretty important step to take, don't you think? Uh, stepping out of that fishing boat, stepping on to that road, and following after this man who had called them. A lot of important steps, a lot of important next steps. Well, Peter wrote this in his first letter, beginning at verse uh, 21 of chapter 2. He wrote, For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he reviled, was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. What do we take from this today? We have been called. That's verse 21. Just like Peter and Andrew were called, we, we have all been called to follow Jesus. Called because he suffered for us. Called by the cross of Christ. Called to take up our cross and follow Jesus. We've all been called in this way. The question, of course, is, have we answered? Have we answered the call? Have we followed? Have we taken that step, that next step, to follow the Lord in his way? Now, if you notice, here, Peter talks about steps, doesn't he? Verse 21. We have been called that we might follow in his steps. And he also says that he left us an example. You see that there in verse 21? To this you have been called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you might follow in his steps. Leaving you an example. The original word there gives us some insight, I think. The word example refers to a pattern. Uh, it's the kind of thing a, a child might trace in order to learn their letters. Uh, I, I don't know exactly these days how they teach writing in school, but uh, believe it or not, I remember way back in the dim mists of time how they did it for me. They had the alphabet displayed prominently in, in the classroom, and uh, you were expected to look at that, and, and then you were given papers where you could trace the outlines of the ABCs, the sort of dashed lines of the letters and you would trace and then below that you would make your own. See, following the example. Uh, that's almost exactly what this word means uh, that Peter uses here. But you, we would do that in order to learn how to make our letters correctly. Peter says that, that Jesus gave us an outline, an example, a tracing, Footsteps to follow. I thought of that um, 
watching our, our, our new videos, new old videos and so forth. Um, what we did with our daughters when they were learning to walk, and uh, I guess now I do it with Maggie's golden retriever puppy. <laughs> but you grab their hands, right? And, uh, and, and, and you lead them in the steps. And, and maybe even you have them step up on your feet. You ever done that with a little one and, and sort of walk with them as you got their hands, giving them an example, helping them get used to the, to the process, showing them how it works, helping them follow your steps. Jesus called us to follow him. He has suffered for us. He went to the cross. Peter so brilliantly by the Spirit lays that out here for us in this passage. He talks about how he did it with humility. He did it by trusting God. Uh, he, he took our sins in his body on the cross. And, and he mentions how he offered us spiritual healing by doing so. And now he has called us to step out and follow his example. To trace his steps. To go where he goes. To, to do what he does. To love who and what he loves. Be willing to suffer when discipleship calls for it. Be willing to submit. To put up with a bunch of junk in this world, you see. Because we know a better world is coming. Have you taken that step? Are you ready to take the next step, whatever that is, for you? Now, folks, Christianity is truly a walk. It is a way. There are steps to take constantly. Christianity is not stagnation. This is a movement we are a part of, not a monument. That means we have to constantly be seeking and studying and discerning what the next step is that we need to take to follow Jesus faithfully. If you haven't taken a new step in years, to follow Jesus, you are not faithful. If, if you have never stepped out in faith to follow Jesus the first time, never answered his initial call to come and follow him, you are lost. And church, this applies to us as a, as a group as well. You see, we are to be a movement, not a monument. We are followers, not frozen in place, no matter how cold it is outside. We're, we're moving, we're following. And so, Lancaster Church, we need to be thinking and praying and discerning our next steps. Jesus is calling. He is on the move. Are we? Where is he calling us to go? What's he calling us to do? For to this you have been called. Because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example 
so that you might follow in his steps. I, I hope that you hear him today. And I hope that you are ready to step out. Whatever that step is for you personally, individually, and that we are, as his people here, ready to take the next step. Let's pray. Our good and loving God, what a privilege to be together in your presence today on this your day, uh, this day we have to honor you and praise your name. We pray we are doing it faithfully and we'll continue uh, and we'll go and live these things out. We pray you will give us wisdom and insight into what you want us to be doing, what step we need to take, whether personally or as a church, and that we will be faithful in following. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior. We pray today, if there be any here who need to name him as Savior and obey his gospel, that they will step out and do so. If there are any that need to come back, that they will. If there are any who need help, that they'll ask. Thank you for hearing us. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. The invitation is extended to any in need this morning. Hope this song will help you think about that. Let us stand. Let us sing.